thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Samantha and I'm in client services here at the Retirement Group. And you're joining us today for the first part of our two-part series on the intricacies of Social Security. We're going to be joined by our advisor, Wesley Boudreau, who's going to be aiming to help you avoid some common blunders and make informed decisions as you undergo your retirement journey. This is a two-part series, as I mentioned, so please, uh, we hope you'll join us for the second part as well. Before I bring Wesley on, I'd like to just remind you that although we work very closely with both active and retired members of the Occidental Petroleum Company, we are not affiliated nor endorsed whatsoever by Occidental Petroleum. We are a completely independent group of financial advisors. And after the presentation, um, I will hum come back on with Wesley to ask him any questions you may have entered into the Q&A box. Please feel free to ask away. It's completely anonymous and we enjoy your questions. We enjoy answering as many as we can, time permitted. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to our speaker today, Wesley Boudreau. Hey, Wesley. All right. Thank you for that uh, introduction, Samantha. Uh, yeah, like she said, we're going to be talking about some different Social Security issues that we see questions come uh, uh, come to us a lot on. Uh, we do have a, a full-fledged Social Security webinar that you can probably find on our website as well, or we can give you those links later uh, that goes into more detail on it. But today, we're going to talk about some different items that, uh, that people tend to ask uh, from time to time. Uh, before I get started, just a quick reminder who the retirement group is. Again, we are an independent financial advisory firm that focus on working with corporate employees and helping them transition into retirement. Now, we've been doing this for a little bit over 30 years, uh, working with a lot of different companies. Um, but what happens is usually our advisors, myself and others across the, con uh, across the country, um, actually specialize on maybe five or six different companies. So that way we have a deeper understanding of your specific benefits inside and out so we can help hold your hand through that transition period and make sure that you maximize the benefits your company does provide you, uh, whether it be, you know, Reviews of the pension plan, the 401k, uh, health care, uh, retiree medical benefits, life insurance transition benefits, things like that. So we can cover any questions you do have. And we do have offices throughout the country. So rest assured, if you need to sit down with somebody face to face, we can probably accommodate that. But honestly, this day and age, it's uh, very easy to do web meetings, phone calls, email. Uh, just let us know what your preferred communication is. We'll be happy to accommodate you there. And at the end of the day, if there's anything you take us up on, it's our complimentary cash flow analysis. This is essentially a detailed financial plan specific to your situation and in some cases specific to your company benefits. So again, it goes back to that aspect I mentioned of um, letting you know uh, when's the best time to retire so you can maximize your company benefits. Uh, you may come to us and say, hey, I'm, Wes, I'm thinking about retiring at age 59 and a half or age 60 because that's when I can tap into my 401k or IRA, for instance. Um, and we may run the reviews and let you know, you know, hey, if you want to retire a little bit earlier, you may be able to, or, uh, you know, you may have to work a little bit later if you want to spend the uh, certain amount you're looking at. We can go through all those different options and also weigh the pros and cons of how your 401k is structured, help you with the allocation there. And uh, especially if you have pension, make sure you understand the claiming strategies there, because a lot of times that can change from year to year, quarter to quarter. So it's really important to understand that. And for those of you that do work with us or have run one of these in the past, if it's been over a year, go ahead and give us a call to update it because uh, a lot has changed in the last year between both interest rates and the markets as well. So let's get into the uh, Social Security questions. Um, we're going to go through four different questions that uh, are some of the key questions we tend to get a lot of times. And like I said, obviously, if it doesn't, doesn't cover everything you need, give me a call. We'll be happy to go through and review your own situation, uh, whether it just be Social Security questions or dig into the retirement planning we talked about before. So first question, let's see. Um, how often should I review my earnings record uh, to ensure that my Social Security benefits will be correctly calculated? Uh, this is actually pretty important, but most people don't do it. Uh, and a lot of times it happens, uh, you know, when you approach retirement, the people go in there and take a look at it and might, you know, uncover an error. Uh, and it may or may not be too late, depending upon if you've changed jobs or if there's records available going farther back. Uh, but one thing I'll, I'll kind of uh, digress a little bit, one thing to be aware of, uh, for a lot of the companies we do work with uh, that do have pension plans, there's usually what's called a Social Security offset component in the calculation of that uh, of that pension calculation. And if you've got uh, if your company estimates a higher Social Security than what your actual Social Security is, then they could be shortchanging you on your um, on your pension, whether it be the annuity or the lump sum. And have a you know give us a call. We can kind of run through that, make sure things match up. And uh, if they don't, uh, actually uh, probably get you a boost in your pension if you're in a situation like that. But as far as checking it, I mean, I, you can do it every year, but I mean, honestly, I, I would say at least every couple of years or so, you want to keep an eye on that and check it to make sure that the information is accurate. It is a responsibility of your employer to give that information to the Social Security Administration. Uh, usually they'll get that over to them by fall of the of the following year. So 
uh, you know, 2022 information wouldn't get over to the Social Security till you know, closer to September, October or so of uh, 2023. So usually can be about a year, year, uh, year or two behind. Uh, they may not have that updated, but so go ahead and just keep an eye on that. Um, some common mistakes you might see uh, in there is, uh, um, generally speaking, if if you're if you basic salary employee and, and there's no major changes, uh, it should match up appropriately. But let's say, for instance, um, maybe you um, maybe you have a hundred thousand dollar salary and then you get bonuses, and maybe those bonuses uh, vary from year to year. Let's assume maybe it's it's twenty thousand uh, dollars. So one instance could be that. Uh, that uh, you know, on your uh, W-2 and everything, uh, whenever you whenever you uh, get your taxes, you see that you made that hundred twenty thousand dollars, and ultimately, uh, um, you know, the company may have withheld Social Security against that one twenty, or maybe only withheld against that one hundred, depending upon if there was a clerical error or anything like that. Uh, the worst case would be if they withheld Social Security uh, um, for that one twenty, but only reported the hundred thousand as your base uh, to Social Security. So that's a good reason to actually check in there. Um, we'll also check in, you know, if you had a transition between jobs, especially if you went from private sector to public or vice versa, there's different issues there as well. But I'd recommend at least check that, you know, periodically every couple of years or so uh, would, would make the most sense there. Question two, uh, if I claim Social Security benefits based on my spouse's record, uh, does it reduce or affect their own benefits in any way? Uh, so what this is asking is, uh, let's assume that uh, that I'm married and uh and uh, and I decide to take spousal benefits off of my wife um, and not claim my own. Will that affect her benefits? Uh, it does not. So the spousal benefits are separate of the uh, of the um, of the spouse's benefits um, based upon for these claiming strategies. So essentially, if you, uh, you know, let's, let's make it simple. Let's assume that let's assume that you have a um, you have a, a couple, husband and wife, for instance. Husband husband's worked, wife has not worked, and. Um, the husband's full retirement benefit is going to be, let's say, three thousand dollars a month at full retirement age. Generally speaking, if the wife, let's say, is the same age, to keep it simple, um, she's going to get fifty percent of his benefit at full retirement age. So she'd be getting fifteen hundred dollars. So thirty thousand and fifteen hundred, forty five hundred combined for the two of them. Um, her collecting does not affect his three thousand dollars whatsoever. Um, now, if she were to decide to collect before full retirement age, then she'll get a reduction, just like the, just like anybody who uh, decides to collect before full retirement age would get a reduction as well. And there's different reduction aspects there, uh, but we can go through all those on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, Social Security analysis if you want to dig into that. So again, simple answer, no. Uh, the spousal benefits do not affect the uh, original Social Security, um, Social Security recipient's uh, benefits in any way. Okay, uh, question three. Uh, I'm divorced and uh, concerning claiming Social Security benefits. How do I know if I qualify to claim under my ex-spouse's earning record? Um, okay, so there's a couple of rules associated with this uh, in order to be eligible to claim benefits on your ex-spouse. Um, first of all, you need it to have been married for 10 years. Um, he or she needs to be eligible uh, to take a Social Security. They don't have to be taking it, but they need to be at least 62, so they're eligible to take it. And uh, you can't be remarried. Um, so you still have to be uh, be single. And I've, I've I've gone through this. I've I've dealt with a client who had a had an ex who uh, was in a, you know a long term relationship and just never got married specifically so that uh, that they could collect on the uh, the ex spouse social security. And they even went through aspects of whether or not you know they were together long enough that it was a common law marriage things like that. But uh, um, <clears throat> but the the issue is you got to make sure that if you're planning on trying to take advantage of this, um, stay divorced or stay single if you would. Uh, if you remarry. Uh, then you lose that benefit. Um, and uh, it's not something you can kind of double dip or do. You, you can't go out there and uh, marry somebody for 10 years, get divorced, marry somebody else for 10 years, do it three times and get three different social securities. It's only going to be one of those that you can actually claim on. So uh, um, I believe, I, it, it, I don't know if it's the, the most recent or if it's the highest, but usually I think it might be the highest calculation on there. Uh, but same situation. Um, you know, if, if you want to get the money as soon as possible, you know, you guys have to be 62 and your spouse, your ex-spouse would have had to be able to claim. Doesn't mean they have to start claiming, but they would have had to be that age. But again, uh, the earlier you do it, uh, the lower those benefits will be. If you wait closer to full retirement age, then it could be, could be higher for you as well. And again, we can go through those calculations one-on-one -on -one if you need to see those. Uh, one, <clears throat> excuse me, one more question here. And I think we'll see, uh, like I said, this is pretty short. We'll see what we have. Uh, from you guys uh, out there on additional questions. Uh, how can my spouse and I, excuse me, <clears throat> how can my how can my spouse and I best coordinate our social security benefits to increase our combined retirement income? I apologize. 
Um, well, there's there's honestly hundreds of ways you could do this. So the the real short answer is uh, give me a call or, or call the retirement group and we can run through your specific situation to see. Uh, but um, we don't have the old kind of fall and suspend options anymore unless you're uh, were born before 1954. But uh, generally speaking, uh, it depends. If uh, if two couples are the exact same age, there's there's one strategy. If there's a separation age, there's a different strategy. Um, if there's different health issues for one versus the other, there's different strategies. Um, so longevity comes into play. Uh, earnings records come into play, whether one worked, one didn't. One was a higher earner, one was a lower earner. There's so many different variables in this. But uh, um, generally speaking, uh, you know, if, if you're looking to review that, just give us a call. We can kind of run through there. There's no one size fits all for every situation. So I'm not going to pretend to give you the, uh, the silver bullet, if you would, on what the best claiming strategy is. Besides the aspect of if you know you're healthy, you think longevity is on your side, Obviously, the longer you can defer, it's going to benefit you more because you're going to get a higher, higher Social Security benefit. You'd want to at least uh, at least defer to a full retirement age and possibly defer longer to age 70. Uh, and also keep in mind, sorry, <clears throat> if you are working, there are potential reductions as far as your benefits prior to full retirement age. Doesn't mean you're going to lose them. It just gets recalculated into the future, uh, the future um, payouts. Uh, but there are different aspects to look at in that scenario as well. So again, uh, no one size fits all. Give us a call to kind of run your specific situation. We can go through that with you. And then keep in mind, we're going to do a, another one. Kind of keep it brief uh, just to kind of, you know, uh, not spend, not uh, waste too much of your time on this. We'll do another one, uh, uh, part two, with another four or five questions in there and allow you to uh, add any new questions you have. But uh, I'll keep this up here for just a second. There's a QR code here. You can go ahead and hold your phone up to that if you'd like to uh, uh, register for that next one coming up, uh, or you can use that link in there as well. And then, like I said before, um, at the end of the day, if you want to review not just Social Security, but your overall retirement situation, it's really important to run that cash flow analysis. Um, it, like I said, right now, about the three fourths of Americans over 50 don't actually have a written plan. If you can spend about uh, maybe as little as 10 minutes, maybe as much as 20 minutes uh, with us on the phone, gathering some details, information, uh, you know, age, uh, um, <clears throat> your age, your retirement uh spending desires, you know, what you've have saved in your 401k pension. We can calculate social security, go through all that to figure out where you are in your life and make sure you're on the right path to meet your retirement goals, whether it be to retire at a specific age, maybe 60, maybe 65, maybe when the last kid gets out of college, there's a lot of different scenarios to look at, but we can review that, uh, your desired scenario and look at alternate scenarios too, to let you know other options you may be looking at or may have available to you. So I know, Samantha, we kind of kept that uh, short, uh, but if there's any other questions, uh, um, let's go ahead and kind of go through those. But uh, while I'll wait on that, I'll leave this screen up here uh, for those questions. There's a couple of QR codes. If you want to uh, sign up for an appointment with myself or one of the other advisors, you can use that. Or if you want to get into our LinkedIn page in order to uh, stay updated on webinars and also get more company specific information. And always you can reach that info at the retirement group dot com or 1-800-900-5867. Uh, did we get any questions come through? Yeah, actually, uh, Wesley, okay. we got two really great ones. <clears throat> this first one, I believe, is a follow-up to one of the questions on the slide. Um, if I discover an error in my earnings record, what steps should I take to correct it? Okay, yeah, so we, we talked about that one as far as checking it periodically, you know, every couple of years or so. If you do see an error, um, you're going to need to call the Social Security Administration. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but you can also go to ssa.gov uh, and go in there and give them a call. Uh, unfortunately, it, it, it may be for maybe some whole times, things like that. It's not the most fun thing to do, but it's definitely something that you need to do because uh, you'd be amazed if there was just a, let's say if you go back and maybe there was one year that was miscalculated a couple of years ago and uh, um, where they, they didn't didn't put in your income or maybe they they uh, miscalculated it. It, it. it could end up being where maybe it, it, it costs you $50, $50 a month uh, for the rest of your life. So it could add up, it could cost you $100 a month the rest of your life. So it's really important to be accurate on those. Um, on the flip side, if you go in there and there's a mistake in your advance, just keep your mouth shut, I guess I would say. Um, but uh, but definitely if there's a mistake uh, that's going to hinder you or, or hurt you, uh, you want to give them a call to uh, get that rectified as soon as possible. Uh, because especially if you've uh, if you've changed uh, companies or things like that, and, and God forbid a company used to work for went out of business or they don't keep their records anymore, it might be hard to track that down and get it corrected. Thank you, Wesley. Um... Okay, one more question. Can my okay. spouse claim their own benefits first and then switch to spousal benefits later based on my earnings record or vice versa? 
Uh, okay, yeah, you, you can still do that first part, the vice versa, no. So the, the vice versa is kind of the uh, the old fall and suspend strategy. Um, you had to be uh, born uh, before 1954 in order to do that. And that was a strategy. Uh, very few people you know, are eligible to do that anymore. But uh, uh, that was a strategy where you could actually, uh, uh, your spouse could file and suspend their uh, uh, their benefits and allow you to claim uh, spousal benefits um, and then let that kind of defer their benefits up till a later date to kind of increase kind of, kind of a double dipping aspect. But nowadays, um, if you decide if anybody files um, and you're looking at taking spousal benefits, you have to, uh, they're going to automatically uh, um, give you both options. So what happens is uh, um, if you wanted to go on there, I'm sorry, repeat the question. <laughs> Uh, can my spouse claim their own benefits first and then switch to spousal benefits later based on my earnings record? Yeah, that one. So that one can happen. So let's assume I'll go back to the example I gave you. Uh, let's assume somebody, uh, one spouse uh, has got you know about $3,000 of benefits and another one, maybe they calculate their benefits. It might end up being $1,000 a month. OK, so in this case, maybe that $1,000 a month uh, person might decide to collect their benefits uh, um, at 62 or earlier. And he or she can get those benefits and then allow that other spouse to defer theirs. And then eventually, if they want to turn on the spousal benefits, uh, they'll get that higher amount. So again, ha spousal benefits is up to 50% of uh, of the spouse. So that 3,000 divided by two is 1,500 versus the 1,000 you were getting. So you're getting a bump up. So it doesn't mean that you fully switch from one to the other. What happens is in that case, you'll still get your $1,000 a month benefit but you'll get a difference, an extra $500 from the spousal benefit there as well. Um, and it's also important to remember that uh, that kind of caps out at, uh, at full retirement age. So there's not really a, a delay in benefit there associated with it uh, on the spousal benefit side. So a little convoluted, but hopefully that kind of answers the question. But like I said before, um, it's best to uh, give us a call, go through your personal situation. And uh, I can run a full social security analysis, kind of show you various claiming strategies um, you know, if, if we knew we were going to pass away, I could tell you exactly what the best option would be, but we have to kind of weigh those pros and cons, look at normal life expectancies, which you think it is, um, go through the financial aspect of it. And then also the emotional aspect of it, where some people are a, a burn the hand versus two in the bush. They'd rather the social security now because they have concerns about it later on in life. Uh, I, I can definitely understand those, but we can go through all those different scenarios to show you uh, the different options. All right. Uh, Wesley, that was all the questions that we had. Okay. Question. Well, thanks for those questions. And uh, like we said before, even though we've worked extensively for over 30 years with a lot with a lot of different companies, that does not mean we're endorsed or employed by them. But uh, obviously, if you have any questions surrounding Social Security that you'd like us to answer, give us a call. And if you want to dig into retirement planning for your company benefits, we can help you out there as well. Again, it's 1-800-900-5867. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Wesley.